I'm Elizabeth Ince, also known as Mrs. Albright. Welcome to Behind the Scenes. Stitches refers to my character who wears the skin of a little old lady so that she can pass through society unnoticed. Who would think that someone as nice as me would really be the devil in disguise? My name is Neil Stevens. I'm the director of uh, Stitches. When he was this character walking around the set, I never knew when I could completely engage with conversation with him because he would uh, he would always be somewhere else. He would always think, be thinking about the next scene and be working through in his brain. And sometimes if you walk into a room and Neil was there by himself, he would be, uh, he would be literally talking to himself and just sort of twitching in the next scene, if you will. He, as a director, was very supportive. Um, he actually rehearsed us. Other than Neil, I had only been actually directed in the film three other times where a director will give me his input, something for me to work off of. Uh, usually with all the other ones, it was um, be prepared when you show up. You have a good idea what you're doing and do it. And if it works fine, uh, in my case, unfortunately, it didn't work all that often. But he was um, good to work with in the, in the respect that he knew how to work with actors. He took the time. We, re we ran through it a couple of times. We rehearsed it and in areas that he thought there might be a little more that could be added. He worked extra time on that, which was really refreshing because when it actually came time to doing the scene, everybody knew what they were going to be doing. Neil, baby, honey. <laughs> we had all these sort of pseudo Hollywood games that we would play. And I have, I'm sort of like a high maintenance chick on the set. So I have all these, I will do this, I won't do that. And, remember, and he said, okay. And I was just stunned, you know. So it, I sort of felt like um, Sally Field at the Academy Awards. You like me. You really like me. Not only did he um, stick to his vision, but he let us play a little, and, and he gave us some freedom to try different things. And uh, he really was on top of it, and he was really great to work with. He has a, a real strong vision for what he wants. And that's really exciting as a performer because it makes for a really nice um, synergy on the set because he knows exactly what he wants and was very communicative. So, I mean, and given the script, which was also very, very good to start with, to have that both there made it a really nice experience. My name is Jeffrey Ralph. I'm the costume designer from Stitches. Uh, when I first saw the script, actually, I realized, of course, it was a period piece set in the 20s. And um, since it wasn't uh, flapper 20s or roaring 20s, and it was set more New England countryside, uh, then it allowed me to think a little bit more uh, about the costumes and uh, making the people that we, that we see in Stitches real people, accessible people. Uh, accessible people. You have a school teacher, you have uh, a married couple, a banker, uh, you have a retired gentleman, and you have uh, a, a homeowner. And so uh, in that, in, in my thinking when developing the characters, I didn't want any flash, uh, any, not, no beads, no gangster looks, uh, which, we actually, uh, which we actually think of when we think uh, about the Roaring Twenties. Um, I tried to keep the, uh, the costumes uh, very clean and definitely of the time. <laughs> well, I just loved the costuming because it took place in 1925, so you got all of the flapper kind of clothing, I mean, not the stereotypical fringes. The stylists were so meticulous to come in for the fittings. They had all the rooms adorned with different types of catalogs and pictures from the age, and right down to the shoes, everything was very, very meticulous to the period. They went into detail from all the way down to the underwear. So since this took place in Maine and it's rather cool and it's in the 20s, all the guys wore long underwear. So throughout the entire shoot, I was wearing long underwear. Uh, the shoes were all period, the pants, uh, shirts, everything was, was very accurate as far as portraying that particular time in history, which is good from a character point of view because it 
allows you to get a little bit more into what you're trying to do. I felt sort of like I was on the set of Titanic, only not. <laughs> The costumes were not exactly what you would necessarily call flattering, <laughs> but uh, we, we uh, tried on a number of different costumes, chose what we felt would be most appropriate for the character, and then one of the pieces we actually had to make a duplicate of because we were going to be doing uh, the slice and dice scenes, as I call them, the, the heavy, heavy duty blood work scenes, and we had to have a duplicate costume for that, which was uh, real interesting. Um, to, to fit me in something that was going to um, be appropriate and yet we could make a duplicate of it because a number of the costumes were in fact uh, authentic 1920s uh, vintage costumes. A week after this I was cast in the show Charmed uh, as a, in the, one of the premonitions it's a 18th century uh, wife uh, so I wore uh, 18th century costume. So that was my second one within like a week of doing stitches. So that was pretty interesting. But the costumes were beautiful. I really think that that day in age does a lot. It, it, it's just, it's pretty, <laughs> for lack of a better word. It just kind of really makes people look good. And a lot of hand prop stuff, actually. Um, and then I consider this part of my costume, even though it's a prop. The scenes were, that I had with Mrs. Albright, um, we, we had such good, a good rapport that working together, our characters just clicked. We really enjoyed that interaction when we did our scenes together. I thought the, the, uh, the imps were particularly funny because they, would, uh, they were basically a crumpled up piece of paper and there would be imps lying around the house everywhere. <laughs> like they, were just, they would just be sitting on the floor and you'd just be all these imps everywhere. Uh, I enjoyed the special effects stuff because it enabled me to do a little bit of well, pseudo stunt work. Um, but this is more, I think, than a typical horror movie. It has all this philosophy about the forces of good and evil, it's got all these plot turns, it's got sort of a whodunit. I don't, I didn't know who I was half the time. You know, Mrs. Albright as Miss Lester, as, as Mrs. Gra was everyone. And you were talking before about the one thing that was interesting and difficult, that, or not necessarily difficult, but just different in Kissing the Girl. <laughs> that was my roommate, too. We were like, we're so, we're such good friends that when we found out, we're like, yay, we both got the Barbie, yay! We hadn't read the script, and we're like, oh my god, <laughs> I have to kiss you. <laughs> and you'll do anything, anything I ask. Yes. Will you be mine forever? Production challenges. Hmm. <laughs> the crack people next door. With this movie in particular, I wish that we had to change locations more than we did because it, this house. Although it was a beautiful house and it looked like it didn't even belong in California because it was so old. It looked like it needed to be in the East Coast or something. Um, it was so dusty that so many people on set were just dying of allergies. Their eyes were all getting puffed up and getting asthma and whatnot and I was one of those people. Between that and the dogs that, I don't know if it was the owner or if it was someone next door had all of these dogs would bark any time that we were shooting a scene. I mean, always you'd get a scene just just to the end and then there's a barking dog or a, a helicopter's going over because you're shooting, you know, on the street basically. And so then you have to stop and set up and go all over again and Neil is yelling, more blood, <laughs> and makeup is running around with buckets of blood and I, I mean, don't get any of that on me, you know. <laughs> experience. Uh, everyone involved from, from the actors to the, to the key people to, to everybody is, is just uh, has performed vastly beyond anything that I, I had any right to expect for the kind of money that we're paying. But, uh, you know, I, think, I think it looks like a movie that, that cost a hundred times as much. <laughs>